As I watched BYU get crushed 44 to 11 by TCU, the immortal words came into my head. U-G-L-Y, you ain't got no alibi, BYU. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the podcast. I also say thank you for your first view of the day, I guess, as well. For those of you checking it out on YouTube, this is your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports. And this is our postcast edition as BYU falls on the road at TCU 44 to 11, and it was not pretty, folks. I like to start out these uh, postcasts talking about the positives for BYU, but frankly, uh, I don't have much uh, positive to give you today. I talked about this when I was out in Lawrence, Kansas, from my hotel room saying that BYU needed to try something completely different, trying to figure something out in the run game, and it felt like, okay, this is that magnified by about 1,500, it feels like, because Quite honestly, I don't have many positive things for BYU in this game. 243 total yards of offense. Keaton Slovis, 44% completion percentage for 152 yards, zero touchdowns against one interception. BYU did rush for 91 yards, but it took him 32 carries to get to that number, an average of 2.8 yards per carry. LJ Martin, once again, averages four yards per carry. Great. Uh, Miles Davis, 4.7 yards per carry, but all for naught. Because BYU's 2 of 14 on third down. And let me also acknowledge that before I lay into the BYU offense, the BYU defense gave up 447 passing yards, 439 of them, to Josh Hoover making his first career start for the TCU Horned Frogs. He was 37 of 58. He completed uh, 64% of his passes, had four touchdowns. He also did have two interceptions, but did they really hurt TCU to any large degree? No, they did not, because in one of them, a fantastic individual effort. I guess I'll say uh, Eddie Heckard, an incredible one-handed interception that he had himself. Well, just a few plays later, Keaton Slovis uh, gets strip-sacked and TC recovers it. It Nothing, and I mean nothing went right for BYU in this game. The defense gave up 584 yards of total offense. Ryan Rico had at least one punt tipped and nearly got blocked a second or third time on special teams. Uh, Parker Kingston came in to start a punt returner for BYU, and what did he face, one punt in this game? If it, uh, It's just total plays. Uh, BYU ran 66 of them. They averaged 3.7 yards per play, whereas TCU gets off 86 plays and averages 6.8 yards per carry. A six point eight yards per play. I, I want, I, I want to have positive things to say about BYU in this game, but this feels like one of those games that you bury or burn the tape and don't ever think of it again. The sad part is for BYU, it feels like they wasted a bye week in 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 some respects as well. You had an entire week; you had fifteen days because BYU played their game. the The final game before the bye week was on a Friday night against Cincinnati, and BYU in that game, there were plenty of scary things for BYU. You had doubled up in yardage plays. A lot of the stats are similar to what happened against TCU today, but BYU was able to take advantage of turnovers, had a pick six, uh, found uh, their offense rolling, found a passing game that really could get them going, and found a way to win that football game despite a lot of the stats uh, going against them. No such luck today. And what did you do for the last 15 days? Now, a couple of you actually had the gall to claim that BYU didn't practice at all during the bye week. Folks, they practiced at least three times. I know for a fact they practiced at least three times during that bye week. Bye weeks are not you just uh, you put the pedal to the metal and you grind these guys to dust. That's not what you do in a bye week. You heal up. And they didn't give BYU players the weekend. But they came out flat, flat as could be in today's game. And that's the disappointing part if you're a Cougar fan is BYU had momentum. And they were supposed to be the fresher team. They're the team that uh, was going up against a team who was reeling. Speaking of TCU, the Horn Frogs had lost back-to-back games in which they had absolutely got and run over in the run game. And suddenly BYU comes in as the cure for what ills TCU because the Horned Frogs limited the Cougars to 91 yards rushing. They limited BYU to 243 total yards. And suddenly they have reinvigorated their own season while sowing all kinds 
of uh, seeds of doubt for the BYU football program. I talked about this week. I felt like this might be a must-win game for BYU because if you go out and win this game, there are a number of games remaining on BYU's schedule that are okay. If you can handle this TCU team, you should be able to handle the likes of Iowa State, Oklahoma State, uh, maybe even West Virginia, et cetera, uh, Texas Tech a week from today. There was some thought if you win those games, okay, suddenly you're looking at being a contender in the Big 12. Conversely, though, if BYU were to lose this game, as I mentioned earlier this week, if you guys have been watching and or listening every day, as I hope you guys are, I said that they were to lose this type of a game to TCU. Is there a single game remaining on BYU's schedule that you can look me straight in the face and say, BYU will win that game, mark it down in pen, it's a done deal? I don't believe you can because BYU got absolutely thrashed They got run around through and over by the TCU Horned Frogs and looked, it was an uninspired flat effort from the BYU football program. You can come at me and say, Jake, I'm sick of you ranting about the BYU football program. What else am I supposed to say about this type of performance for the BYU football program? Oh, they'll be fine. They'll bounce back from this. Folks, they had, they were four and one. They had some momentum going into that bye week. They had found ways to win football games. This was by far, I mean, by far their worst effort of the season. And it comes off of a bye week. But then I said, like I mentioned, you're supposed to be refreshed. You're supposed to be feeling good about yourselves. You're supposed to have guys back from injury. Cody Epps is back on the field for BYU. No fat, non-factor for the BYU football program. Speaking of Cody Epps, a guy who was a breakout star a season ago. There was there is little to no positives to take away from a game like this. And like I said, it casts all kinds of doubt on BYU's ability to find two more wins down the stretch of this season to get to bowl eligibility. It's right back to where I said at the start of the season, I thought six and six would be an accomplishment for BYU. It feels like at this point, could they stun everybody and have me eating crow next week? If they were to come out on their home turf against Texas tech and put out an awesome effort and suddenly have their best performance of the season and reinvigorate their own season. Yes, they very well could do that, but until they play that game and until they prove they can do that, what are we left to see? What are we left to break down? What are we left to think about the BYU football program? They choked. They fell flat. It was not a good enough effort for BYU in this game. And uh, if you're Kalani Satake, he was questioning uh, his team. He said that we are six games in. We're still having some of the same issues. We need a sense of urgency. I think it was the terminology he used. He uses that all the time. And I know that the coach speak from Kalani Satake can grate on people. I get that. He says we're six games into this thing. We haven't figured out the offense yet. You haven't figured out a lot of stuff. Trust me. Like you couldn't get a yard on fourth and short in on that tush push. And the thing about it is you had a hard enough time getting guys onto the field to even run that play. There are so many question marks still about this BYU football program. And we're halfway through this season. It's, it's baffling. It is absolutely baffling to me what's going on with this BYU football program. And like I said, I talked about on the podcast all week long that BYU had found ways to win games. They were four and one and they had f- played far from their best game, best game this season. And I ho- the hope was that coming out of the bye week when guys like Aaron Roderick had said that BYU maybe had some of their best practices in the bye week and obviously got back to basics and worked on their run game and et cetera, et cetera, on down the list. I did not expect them to come out and have their worst performance of the season. I told you guys on the podcast as well. My gut told me BYU was in a pretty good spot, and I thought they were going to go in and handle business against TCU. Well, it sure feels like that gut feeling to me was indigestion and not my gut telling me the right thing. That This is this is not fun to do when it comes to losses like this, but I like it, it just yeah, – it, it's one of those things you – I want to have some positive to talk about for BYU. Maybe my film review, I'll find some nugget in there. Siali Sarah, his first uh, action for BYU in large doses gets an interception for BYU. That's a positive because he looks like a future building block for BYU at linebacker. That's okay. That's a positive for you guys. I can think of off the top of my head. But injuries mounted once again in this game. That that that's the concern for BYU is they have lost a lot of their horses that they were counting on this season, and we're not even halfway through the season. What's the back half hold? Well, only two games against top 10 caliber opponents in Oklahoma and Texas, among other teams that are capable on any given week, apparently of beating each other up because Oklahoma State won on Saturday. West Virginia fell in absolutely crazy fashion on Thursday night to Houston. The Big 12 is just a big mess right now when it comes to week to week results. The problem is it feels like BYU went from being in the middle of the pack team to the power rankings probably just have BYU 14th after the, the no show they had against uh against tcu so uh we're gonna get to your comments coming up next and uh, i'm uh, 
None of them are positive. I can tell you that much. And we'll, we'll throw it up on the screen and we'll, we'll uh, read them. And we're going to get to them here in just a moment. Before we do that, though, let's talk about one of our good friends over at Perry Homes. Now, Perry Homes has been with us for years. Uh, whether you're looking for your first home, you're ready to upgrade to your dream home, my friends, Perry Homes has got a house for you for 50 years. Perry Homes has been Utah's premier home builder with communities throughout the state. They've been in communities, home designs, and price points, all designed to meet your needs. Simple as that. They also have beautiful communities in Davis, Salt Lake, Tula, and Utah counties all along the Wasatch Front. Or if you prefer to live down in Red Rock Country, get onto Southern Utah, they have multiple communities in Washington County as well near St. George. They offer over 50 unique home designs from Ramblers to two stories of townhomes, and they're they're happy to work with you to find what fits you and your needs best. They even have quick move-in homes available if you're ready to move now, and they're offering generous financing incentives through their preferred lender as well. So visit PerryHomesUtah.com. That's P-E-R-R-Y, PerryHomesUtah.com to see what's new in Utah's finest neighborhoods. Once again, Perry PerryHomesUtah.com. For 50 years, Utah has been coming home to Perry Homes. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your day. Thank you for making it uh, your first listen. Thank you for being every day with this podcast, even amidst the carnage uh, and the, the bad vibes coming out of this TCU game. Uh, thank you for your support of the podcast. All right, uh, let's share the screen here, and we'll let you guys have your say from social media. Uh, it, and like I said, it's not it, it's it's not pretty. So uh, bear with me. Let's throw that up here, and let's let's talk about what we are to take away from BYU and uh, this loss. All right, so I threw it up on Twitter on Locked on Cougars. Let's get it started. Sending your takeaways for the debacle for BYU and we use them on the postcast edition of the podcast. Uh, first one coming in from Rich Beaker. Awful coaching, play calling, and effort. Uh, I, I got to say the play calling was uninspired. It felt like it felt like BYU prepared for one thing and got outclassed by everything that they expected to see. Now, obviously having a young quarterback like Josh Hoover, who doesn't have much game tape at all, you're kind of preparing for the unknown, but did anybody expect him to come out and for, throw for 400 yards? I sure didn't. I don't think BYU planned on that either, but uh Kid balled out, and he he made BYU pay. Like I said, BYU, what was it? They uh, 12 of 19 on third downs for TCU. It's just, it's abysmal, the numbers. I, I look at this, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is 31st downs for TCU. On our post-game show on the KSL Sports Zone, Alex Curry pointed out that, uh, I think he said there were 50-some-odd plays that TCU had a first down. It was so the first down plays. They gained more than 300 yards off those first down plays alone. BYU had 25 such plays and gained just 68 yards. It's the numbers are not pretty uh, for BYU. All right, on to the next one here. Matt at M. Staples. Still can't find any positive takeaways. Hopefully we can fix things and right the ship. I don't know if we're capable of doing that. We had two weeks to get things right and didn't do it. You're not wrong, Matt. That's the thing about this. It, they did not look like the bye week did them quite literally any good. They jumbled the offensive line. They had some injuries obviously creep up. They had to replace guys in the defensive secondary. But it looked like more of the same. And they got absolutely outclassed by maybe a, a, a team that uh, looks more like they are know what they're doing at the Power 5 level. Uh, Blaine Saunders, not sure what experiment the, co the coaches, or the couches here, came up with over the bye week, but that was horrific. One thing that bothers me about watching this team at times is the lack of urgency or energy, especially from the quarterback position. I would like to see more passion, dot, dot, dot. Uh, well, yeah, they, here's the thing. It did not look like an inspired effort. I will give you that Blaine. And it, it's tough. It's tough to absorb what we all observed in that game and come up with anything other than be, yeah, feeling it was a horrific, that it's a good term. Uh, Jeff Hennor, our good friend uh, down in Tampa, Florida, the further we get away from that Arkansas, when the more we'll realize that we're not as good as we think we are, the teams we've beaten are under 500. I think it was six and 16 coming into this game, which is true. BYU had beaten up on a lot of teams who had losing records uh, that were under 500. I believe we'll still be bull eligible though. Okay, Jeff, I, I, I respect the fact that you think BYU is still going to get to six wins. Now I thought TCU was one of the wins you needed to count on because they were, they were, like I said, they were down and you needed to go and kick them while they were down. But unfortunately they kicked right back and threw an uppercut or two at you as well. And, and caught you, uh, Nick Lee, BYU's coaches need a long look in the mirror. What exactly were they doing all bye week drinking swick and eating pizza, going to top golf, the offensive coaching staff better feel the heat offensive line, drank the quote rat poison this off season. No job is safe after that disgrace. Now, uh, I I have a hard time saying that uh, coaches should lose jobs over any individual performance, Nick. I, I respect the passion you've got. The problem is, as you mentioned, is it just didn't look like they had any cohesive idea of what they were doing out there. And it happens. Let me, let me also acknowledge that. Stuff like this happens. You get just plain beat at times. But 
you would think, like I said, with 15 days off and uh, extra time to prepare and all of the things that go into a bye week, you would have expected a better effort from BYU, considering this is a team who had grinded out four wins to this point. You did not expect them to take two weeks off, have their bye week, and come out with their worst performance of the season. It was it should have been quite literally the opposite, it feels like, in many respects. All right, Neil B at under, underscore six. It seemed like to me that although the players struggled against a well-oiled TCU team, the coaches were befuddled and couldn't uh, seem to find a way to help the players out of the hole be what you found themselves in from the outset uh it's a it's a true they they struggled and it's a whole team issue right now for byu no facet of the game in this uh in this game for b no part or fast when i'm just struggling with all kinds of words on this i apologize but uh it's it's right it's just not it's not good enough and they, they couldn't find themselves. They couldn't dig themselves out of the hole. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Drew Wallace, a D34 Wallace, says, just show up on the road. All three games on the road this year start out with giving the other team points. That is a focus, preparation, and coaching problem. Uh, well, here's the thing. Yeah, you have been in a hole every road game so far this year. You found a way to, to bounce back. Obviously, from that a hole you found yourself against Arkansas, unfortunately, could not get out of it against uh, Kansas, even though BYU played much better the entire game against Kansas than they, they did today. But you do have to find a way to maybe find yourself uh, leading, playing from the front on the road at some point. I would agree with you on that. Um, Kyle, Kyle I'm going to ignore your comment there. I'm not talking about that. Uh, let's see. Next one. Ed at Edither46. Uh, I'm worried about a lull after the bye. BYU appeared totally unprepared for what hit them. I don't think this is the same BYU team that won or competed in the past five games. I still think BYU wins two more games, and one of those will surprise us. Time to leave this one behind. Uh, yeah, it's time to leave this one behind. You. This is one of the ones that you just say, okay, you know what? We're leaving that one in the past. We're not thinking about it. We're moving on, and so be it. We're just going to We're gonna have to uh, pick up. The nice part is BYU doesn't have much time to sulk. They've got to get right back to it because T uh, Texas Tech is coming in. And by the way, if you want to talk about uh, quarterback injuries, Texas Tech, uh, Baron Morton, uh, their backup quarterback who replaced Tyler Shucker this season, got injured against Kansas State. They put a true freshman in the game, and he ended up throwing for in three interceptions. Now, you hear the term freshman quarterback, you're probably skin bristles because that was a freshman quarterback. They just carved you up to the tune of 439 yards uh, in this game against TCU, but it, you got to you've got to bounce back. You have to get off the deck if you're BYU. You cannot afford to let this spiral. And I actually saw this. I think I got an email about this uh, from Tanner Mortimer. Do uh, you guys realize BYU's not won a game in the month of October, going back to 2021? They were 0 for last year. They're now 0 and 1 in October this year. They have not won uh, since uh, 2011. Let's see. Yeah, BYU's October woes persists. Come from Tanner Mortimer. On uh, an email he sent to me at locked on cougars at BYU dot uh, locked on BYU at Gmail locked on BYU at Gmail dot com. BYU's October woes persist with their last victory dating back to 2021. He's not wrong about this. He also added this. What a disappointing game. The Cougars showcased a dismal performance. My father in law, Gordon, and I felt super disheartened. We are hoping for a complete game, but alas, they fell short, uh, resembling an FCS team against TCU. Costly turnovers and lackluster rushing added to the despair. Despite the setback, as a dedicated fan, I will remain unwavering in my support. Well, Tanner, I appreciate you weighing in and thank you uh, for the support as always. All right. Uh, more comments here. Uh, Daniel Rigby, please don't cheese. Well, BYU is bad, and that makes me sad. Are you trying to rhyme there? Please don't cheese. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure they get how they get better. Game six, and they're the same problems we saw in game one. Do we win another game this year? Now, that is a question multiple people, and you know who you are, who texted me and said that BYU may not win another game this year. You have this type of effort? The rest of the season, every single game, yeah, you very well could lose out. But I'm expecting Kalani Sitake to light a fire under his guys. That's what he's paid for. That's what all these coaches are paid for is to get these guys and uh, get them get them to rally. They have to rally because if you allow this to spiral like this, well, then at that point, the coaches' jobs are absolutely on the chopping block because at that point, they've been unable to inspire their players. And that's when, as, they, as a lot of ADs will talk about when they fire coaches, guys have lost the locker room. That's what you have to avoid for BYU. Uh, Casey Finlinson, our good friend, FinDaddy81. I joyfully left at halftime to a church meeting and didn't see the rest. After I saw what happened, I am glad I put a little Jesus in my life. Well, Casey, uh, yeah, I can understand that because it was not, not a good performance. And obviously, you, you avoided having to watch uh, that second half. All right, uh, Mojo. Jacob, honestly, at a loss. And of course, Mojo, obviously, is serving our country as an Air Force uh, pilot. So, Mojo, thank one, I can't thank you enough for your support of our country uh, and our armed forces. He says, Jake, I'm honestly at a loss. I can't even pick a single thing to blame. What an embarrassment. 
there were a lot of shades of some of the worst losses of the Kalani Satake era in this game. And that's the, that's the really crappy part to think back on. And they've been through some embarrassing losses in Kalani Satake's run. Think back to losing to UMass at home, not crossing the 50 against LSU. There are uh, losing seven to six to NIU on your home turf. There are a lot of embarrassing losses in BYU's recent past, and this ranks right up there amongst amongst them. That's the tough part about it. Uh, BYU for Trey, a playoff bogey. BYU has to recruit better. People are going to blame the coaches, but they shouldn't. The scheme is good. BYU just needs more athletes on both sides of the ball to compete against the TCUs of the world. Also, we shouldn't lose. We shouldn't lose hope. This was just one game. Just need two Ws. Now, that's a good point. It is just one game. And I know that you don't want to necessarily overreact to one game. And maybe I have overreacted uh, to too much of a degree on this postcast of the uh, edition of the show. But like I said, you had 15 days to prepare for this game and you put out your worst effort of the season uh, versus maybe uh, putting out your best or maybe a better performance. That's the concern I had for BYU. Um, all right, uh, B- Bryce on BYU Podcast. Well, Bryce, if you're a podcaster, reach out. We'd love to uh, cro- cross-collaborate with you. Uh, Bryce on BYU says, probably the worst called game of A-Rod's cl- uh, career, speaking of Aaron Roderick. Suddenly, I'm very afraid this team doesn't make it to a bowl game this year. I, I don't see any other way that you can not You can be concerned about that because if you look at just in the, in the circumstance of this game alone right now for the Cougars, it's disappointing because they very well uh, might find themselves battling on Thanksgiving weekend against Oklahoma State. Maybe they have a fifth win and they're looking for that elusive sixth win to get to bowl eligibility. That's that's the concern. I get the concern that you have right now for BYU. All right, we will roll through some more uh, comments uh, before we wrap up this postcast edition of the show. Uh, but let's talk first about our friends over at UCCU. Now, UCC has been working on this for uh, quite a while now. They have a new thing. Uh, it's not really necessarily new, but it's a really innovative feature. It's called Learn and Earn. The UCCU mobile banking app is paying your entire family to learn about money, my friends. Kids look to parents to become financially literate. Parents don't always have the answers. Learn and Earn breaks down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. And every time you or your family member completes a topic, you earn points that accrue and can be redeemed for gift cards to many, many stores. Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and many, many more. There's age appropriate content for every member of the family. All can compete against one another and track your progress on leaderboards. More importantly, Learn and Earn is available inside the UCCU mobile banking app. So you can play it anytime, anywhere. And of course, the more you play, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the more you earn. Learn and Earn, part of UCCU's award winning B Money Smart Youth Banking program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together. It's all courtesy of UCCU. Love where you bank. All right, on to some more comments here. Big thank you once again for supporting Locked On Cougars and obviously for downloading, watching, liking, rating, reviewing, doing all the things you guys do to support this show. Uh, It's very appreciated, uh, the support you guys give us on the podcast. All right. Uh, let's see. Next one. Uh, Jeff Benware, Benware, Jeff says, Roderick, thanks for all you've done, but I'm taking over offensive play calling. That is all. Well, Jeff, I wish you the best as new BYU's new offensive coordinator. Now, if that was reality, uh, I'd love to hear your philosophy on it, but, uh, it was a tough game. There's no doubt about it. Uh, let's see. South end zone for life. He uh, quote tweeted his own tweet says, this is why BYU is still at risk of not making a bowl game. He talks to he quote tweeted a tweet here. Uh, strength of schedule. Yeah. BYU has a very, very uh, stout schedule ahead of them uh, here for BYU. So I, I get what you're saying. South end zone for life. Open source. Coug. I appreciate that. Uh, Daniel Rigby. Once again, please don't cheese. I recently had a mole removed from my upper, upper thigh. I was more comfortable then as a doctor to use a razor blade to scrape that mole off of my leg with my, you know what, in their hands than when I was watching this game. Well, okay, uh, that's that's one way to describe it. Uh, Landon Sorensen, ouch. Eh, that's not a bad one there. Texas Colonel, most of expect most of us expected BYU to be four and two at this point. The drama gets our hopes up and then lets us down. Let's stay positive, enjoy the ride. We need all the positive energy right now, not negative. Okay, Texas Colonel, I appreciate that. And I think Texas, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you were at that game against TCU. I appreciate that. And by the way, number of uh, missionaries for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints stuck it out for the entire game. So uh, big props to the Fort Worth uh, uh, mission uh, for showing up and uh, representing BYU there. Uh, big Uncle Pooh, our good friend. Game didn't happen. Time to plan a tailgate for Texas Tech. Moving on. That's not a bad idea right there. Pooh has the right idea. Just move on. We're moving on with this. It didn't, it didn't happen in his mind. Uh, not bad. All right, Jordan Kennard. Uh, BYU needs to start looking at the coaching and preparation. Yes, we needed better players, but we are not going to get better at recruiting if we are not winning or at least playing well. This game, it just felt like the team was not prepared at all, and that's on coaching. 
Now, I, while I agree that they were flat today, let's also acknowledge, going back to what Texas Colonel said, BYU still is 4-2. and two. They are still having a winning season. This individual game is just, it's just not a good one. And that's, uh, we go game by game. And we'll obviously kind of take the the whole, some of the thing, uh, speaking of the season itself, we'll break that down when it comes to it. But we're halfway through the season and a lot of people have pointed out, a lot of the same mistakes are still happening for BYU. That's the tough part about it. Uh, moving along here, Andrew Lord at Lord Andrew One says, BYU got punched in the mouth early yet again, but unlike other times, never got back up off the mat. Lots to learn for the big picture, recruiting, coaching, by management, but t- maybe too many game mistakes to fix with film. Burn the tape and move on. It's, it's disappointing. There's no doubt about it. Matthew Roberts says, I mean, Roberts 91, disappointing loss, especially coming off a of bye. Look completely out of sync. Good thing you can bounce back at home next week. And that's the hope. You got to bounce back. You got to get off the deck. You have to get back off the, off that mat, and you got to respond next week against Texas Tech. It's homecoming. A lot of Big Twelve people are coming in. They're having a a, a women's a women's sports um, panel. Uh, it's coming to Provo. There's a lot of different big name people coming to Provo next week. You need to have a better performance uh, in that game, no doubt about it. Uh, Bleeding Blue at uh, Katie Burner 155. The bit, pick six showed us how the game would go. I don't know if anything was happening we don't know about, but it seemed like everyone was struggling with something deeper than football. I had to shut the game off. I can't stand losing honorably. I can't stand playing with no fight at all. Okay, I can understand that. Uh, Mark, poor play calling. No adjustments on offense or defense. Locking on receivers. Clint Bergstrom, the entire team did not show up. Apparently a week off was the worst thing that could have happened. We made TCU look like national title contenders. (sighs) It's, yeah. (laughs) Some of these, and some of them have some fun as well. Uh, Let's see. uh, Ryan at Bleed Blue 4141. Uh, For the past few years, win or lose, this offense makes things look difficult. No matter what team you play, it feels like we are struggling for every completion, every run, every first down. It never looks totally cohesive, even if it's resulting in points and wins. And TCU exposed us. Okay. Uh, Now, uh, Richard Molman responds with the the classic clip uh, from the Waterboy. Oh, no, we suck again. It's, uh, what's his name? Um, Oh, man, I can't. Actor, he's been in, uh, um, it's going to come to me as soon as I finish recording this podcast. But nonetheless, um, Derek here, Jake, any truth to the, to the team taking an entire week off? No, they did not take an entire week off. If so, that's horrible. Not what a bye week is for, especially if you aspire to compete year in and year out in the power of five. Well, they, they did not take a week off. I can assure you of that, Derek, uh, with a bunch of numbers behind your name. Uh, now the final one here, we'll give the final word, I guess, to ice because this one just made me chuckle. Uh, Cruiser head 40. Jake, is it allowed to start drinking alcohol after this game? I think so. Well, uh, I know our good friend Boozen Coog. Uh, oh, no, not Boozen Coog. Boozen Coog would agree with that probably. But uh, Inked Cougar, our good friend Jake, uh, he had a tweet that says, uh, the Cougars are why I drink. So uh, you may cope with this however uh, you decide to do it. But uh, thank you to all of you once again uh, for your support of the podcast. Uh, always fun to be with you guys and obviously talking about all things uh, BYU. Uh, I'm going to go back to this film. I'm going to subject myself to watching this over again. And like I said, I am going to hunt high and low for any and all positives I can glean from the tape. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of negatives. They'll pop up as well. And we'll break that all down on our Monday edition of the podcast. But until then, my friends, thank you once again uh truthfully for all of your support of the podcast i cannot uh i there's no adequate way to thank you guys for all the support you've given us we're five plus years into this project and we are not stopping anytime soon and of course we'll be back with you guys again soon on our monday edition of the podcast once again a film review monday looking back at this debacle against tcu and i'll share what i learned after i rewatch the tape and until then my friends thank you once again for making lockdown cougars your first listen of the day and thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on Locked On Cougars. See ya.